Uh, it's kind of cliche, but my favorite part of the job is that it doesn't really feel like a job to me. It actually blows my mind that people pay me to do what I do, because I have fun. On the Dr. Pole show, I am uh, on the A camera team. We have our camera teams colored, so A camera's red, uh, B camera is blue, and camera C is green. And we also have an additional camera with, it's just a camera and a producer, no audio um, mixer for them, and they're, we call them Team Nighthawk, but technically it's camera D. And the camera assistant, which is my job, uh, the camera assistant is in charge of making sure the camera operator has everything he needs. I clean the camera, I make sure there's batteries and fresh media um, in the camera so he can shoot all day long if he has to. I also will pick up the camera and shoot for him if he needs a break, if he has to go use the restroom and, and something's happening. It's reality so it doesn't stop. It, we're shooting all day sometimes and uh, I fill in for him when he needs me to. The production assistant gets releases from the people we have on TV. They have them sign a waiver that says that they're okay with being on TV and that they uh, are okay with us being on their property. Uh, that also goes with the farmers and everybody who comes into the clinic. Without them saying that we can film them or be on their property, we wouldn't have a show. So we do a lot of work to try to uh, keep the farmers in the area happy, especially the people we go to all the time. As far as relationships with the clinic staff go, we like to joke around with them. It's because we've been there for so long, so you know who you can joke around with and who you can't and what time is best. So we like to have fun, yeah. We, we tease them, we sometimes we'll hide something around the clinic or we'll, you know, we'll, we'll play around with them and they'll do the same to us. It's, it's a lot of fun. Dr. Pohl would probably say he has the most fun on set, but that varies from day to day and how much sleep he's gotten and how much coffee he's drank. Every team, every camera team uh, has, you know, their little jokes and stuff and they like to pick on each other. And we like to pick on other camera teams too. Blue team, it always seems like they're picking on their PA, Elizabeth. They seem to be, that seems to be uh, their uh, pastime. Just to, uh, you know, tease her. Um, it's all in good fun though. I mean, we've been working together so long, it seems like a family. We have a, a wide variety of experience levels in our camera crew. Uh, some camera guys have been shooting for years, um, going on like 20 plus years. And we have another camera guy who's uh, relatively new, a uh, couple of years I think. So, but everybody has uh, room to grow, especially things to learn from in reality. Um, once you know the camera, it's more about being able to predict the future when you shoot reality style and you gotta shoot with your ears. You gotta listen more than you're watching the frame, which is counterintuitive because you would think you're always watching what's going on, but you have to keep your ears open and, and be able to uh, kind of predict what is gonna happen next so you can be prepared for it and have the camera there. We have a lot of cool uh, ways to add production value to our show. We have things called a slider, which is we mount a camera on a track that moves smoothly left and right. We have things that turn the camera head, um, turns the camera, it's like a robotic head, and it'll turn the camera a precise amount every couple seconds, and we use that to do time lapses. And these things add production value to the show, make the show look nice and pretty. And also, once a month, once a leg for our uh, production, we bring out a jib and a jib operator. We have a uh, studio, which is really just a garage that we turned into a studio. There's no soundproofing or anything that a studio should have, but we call it a studio. Um, we set up an interview in there. We, I think we do an interview every day. It's a sit down interview, which is different from our on the fly interviews, which we just do in the field. We just uh, have them stand in front of something that looks decent and we shoot that. But when we do our sit down interviews, it's a little bit more uh, involved. We have a projector. Um, it's a, we use front projector projection not rear projection so that the image is brighter but we have a projector right behind where the person sits actually big projector screen behind them and then um, a bunch of lights and controlling devices to make them look nice and pretty we have two production offices one in Mount Pleasant where um, the crew stays in an apartment complex and another production office on site at the clinic my day starts there, I load up the car with all the gear and we roll out to the clinic and it ends there too. 
when we get back there, um, we unload the car, put everything away. I take the cameras out and clean them if they need to be cleaned. Um, and I charge up all the batteries and I log the footage, which just means uh, making a sticker and putting the date on it and writing down a brief description of what we shot on that card. The mayor comes in heat and he's too small. The mini horse castration that you witnessed was, it was actually, he thought it was a cryptorchid, which it means one of the testicles isn't descended and that he was going to have to go fishing for it and find it. On the Dr. Pole show, I drive the chase vehicle. A camera follows Dr. Pole all day. So one camera team will advance, get to the farm call before we do, and before Dr. Pole does to do uh, some of the preliminary interviews and just to get a, a lay of the land and see the animal that's hurt before Dr. Pole gets there to help it. I drive the car that just follows Dr. Pole. We have to stay within one to two car lengths of him to get an audio signal from his car because we have a, an audio uh, recorder and some cameras in his car to record him while he drives. So we have to stay relatively close to him. So it's, it's a challenge sometimes keeping up with him. Somebody once told me to always do what you say and say what you do. As long as you do that, you'll always have a job, no matter what you want to do.